video will introduce to you the six stages of clay. So when we're working with clay, it's really important to understand the different stages of clay. And those stages change based on how much water or moisture is in the clay. So the first stage of clay is called slip. And slip is a liquid form of clay. Now generally slip is just clay watered down with water. And we use that like glue to join two pieces of clay together. But there are other options for slip that we can use to join pieces of clay together. So um, in class, we have what's called magic water. And magic water is something that we mix up here at school. It's a combination of sodium silicate and soda ash. So I take a little bit of each of those and I mix it with water. And this magic water helps us to create a very, very secured bond when we're joining two pieces of clay together. Now, the magic water looks like water, but it's not. So we don't want to get it confused. Um, we only use this for joining pieces of clay together. We would never use the magic water to smooth something out. Okay, so in class, there'll be a container for each table um, of magic water that you'll use um, while working. Now, if you're working at home, you have a couple of options. You, you won't be able to make the magic water at home, and I wouldn't suggest that you do. Um, you have to make it a gallon at a time. Um, it's just probably not a good idea to make that at home. So in place of magic water, you could use um, a distilled white vinegar. Um, it really doesn't matter the brand. You do want to make sure it's white vinegar. Um, I haven't tried apple cider vinegar. It may work, but I do know that the white vinegar does work. Um, so this can be used by itself. I could pour this into, maybe I have a little plastic container um, that I can pour some of the vinegar into. Um, if it's too smelly, uh, the vinegar is kind of smelly, you can dilute it with a little bit of water. But make sure that you have more vinegar than water and kind of mix it up. And then this can be used um, for joining. There's another option um, for making slip. Um, so everyone who's working at home has been given some clay. Um, what you would do is you would take just a little bit of the clay that you were given, not very much. You can always make more as you need it. And you're going to take a little chunk of clay and we're going to break it into smaller pieces. And I would recommend that you do this on a surface that's porous or a, surf a surface that's going to absorb the moisture out of the clay. So I wouldn't put this in my plastic container and seal it up because that's not going to let... Um, the clay dry out. So we want to get all the air out of the clay. So I might find a spot in my garage or in my bedroom or somewhere off to the side where no one's going to mess with it, where I can break up some clay into small pieces. You could do this on like a wood board. You could do this on some paper towel. You could do this on a piece of cardboard, something that will absorb the moisture out of the clay. That will help um, these little pieces to dry out faster. Now, um, I already have some clay that I have dried out, so you can see the difference here. So this clay has a lot of water in it. It's still gonna stick together. I can take all this clay and squish it back together, okay? So it's really soft. Um, so I'm gonna separate it as much as possible. But this clay that I have here has dried out. This clay, if I try to squish it back together, it's not gonna squish back together. The color is also changed, okay? So these are two different stages of clay that we're gonna be talking about in this video. So once this clay has dried out, I'm going to put this off to the side. So let's say that I've let my clay dry out. I'm going to find a container um, that I can store my slip in. And you do want to make sure it's a container that you can put the lid on. You'll take all of your little bone dry pieces of clay and put that into your container. And then we're going to add some water. Now you want to be very careful not to add too much water. It's easier to add more water if we need it, but it's much more difficult to take water away if we've added too much. So I have some water here in a measuring cup. I'm going to pour in enough water into my cup so that it is covering the surface of the bone dry clay. So I'm just going to add enough so that it's covering the top. And a little bit of it can still be sticking out of the top. So it's going to kind of be like this. You might even hear, you might not be able to hear from the video, but it's going to start to fizz and make a, a, like a sizzling sound. That is the water being put back into the clay. So you would let this sit, okay, and you can leave the lid off or you can leave the lid on. 
I might just crack it on top, just kind of lightly put it on there. And then put this off to the side for like a day. Um, let that start to dissolve the clay. Um, as your clay is dissolving, you're going to see that it's going to start to turn muddy. So I have a brush here that I can kind of show you. So this is starting to get more like slip, okay? Um, it's still pretty chunky. So I've had this one sitting out for a little while. Um, my bone dried clay is no longer bone dry. And this has been sitting probably for a half hour or so. So not very long. It, has, it doesn't take very long to do this. Um, the longest part is getting the clay to become bone dry. Um, you, can, you can speed up that process by putting a blow dryer or something on it to help get some of the air out or the moisture out of the clay. But right now I'm noticing that my slip is still pretty thick. I want it to be a little bit more watery so that it can go on um, and join more like a glue. So I'm going to add just a little bit more water to this one. I can add little bits at a time and then I'll mix that up with a stick, with a brush, with a spoon. Um, mix it up. Make sure there are no little chunks in there. Um, if it's still kind of chunky, just let it sit a little bit longer. It's just not ready, okay? But the consistency of the slip should be a little bit more watery, okay? So it should almost flow off your brush. If it's not flowing off your brush, keep adding a little bit more water at a time. Remember, don't add too much. We still want it to have like a thicker consistency. It really should be about the consistency, if you can think of like what a milkshake looks like. So you want your slip to be about the consistency of a milkshake. So mine's getting closer. I could then use this as slip. I would wanna just be very careful that I don't let this dry out. Once I get my slip to a good consistency, um, throughout the semester, I may need to make more. Um, I may need to occasionally add a little bit more water to it. Um, so that's fine. So make sure you're monitoring your slip if you make it this way, if you're not using the white vinegar, and make sure that it's liquid enough like a milkshake, okay? So I'm going to put this off to the side, and then we're going to talk about next the, the second stage of clay. Okay, so the second stage of clay is called plastic clay. Plastic clay has a lot of water in it. It's very malleable, which means it's flexible, it's bendable, we can mold it, we're gonna build with it, we construct with it. The clay that we order um, for class comes from a company called Amico. And inside the box of clay are two of these blocks. So each box of clay is 50 pounds and there are two 25, 25 pound blocks of clay um, in the box. So this is a brand new block of clay. Um, it's very squishy. I could tell by feeling it, I could squish down on it. So this is the first stage of clay is called plastic. Now you'll be given plastic clay to start your project. This plastic clay is going to change as the water evaporates out of the clay. Okay, so I'm just going to cut some clay off of my block here. And depending on what project we're doing, um, your teacher will give you the right amount of clay that you'll need for the assignment. But since I'm just showing you about the stages of clay, I'm just gonna trim off a little bit of the top. So this tool that I'm using is called a wire cutter and it's used to cut clay off of the block here. Get some of this clay off. And then this is a good time to talk about how important it is to make sure you keep your clay covered um, clay, when, as it starts to dry out, is no longer going to be soft and squishy. It's going to be harder to work with. So this bag of clay that I have, or your bag of clay at home, or if you're in class and you have extra clay, it's really, really important that you have it in a bag that does not have any holes in it. If there are holes in your bag, either double bag it with another bag on top, or get rid of the bag with a hole in it and put it into a fresh bag. And then it's also a good idea to take some damp paper towel and kind of drape it along the top of your, of your clay. So I have some paper towel here. Um, it's really important though that we don't add too much water to our paper towel. So I'm going to use the sink right back here. I'm going to get my paper towel wet and then I'm going to squeeze all the water out of the clay, as much water as I can just to make it damp. I want to make sure I squeeze all the water out of my paper towel. 
especially if I'm working at home, the paper towel we have in class is really thin and the paper towel you have at home might be thicker. It might be worth buying just some cheap paper towel to use for ceramics class so you're not wasting the good expensive paper towel um, for your clay projects. But um, as you can see, my paper towel's not dripping, okay? But the whole thing is wet. So there's no dry spots on it. I got the whole thing wet and then wring, I wrung out all of the water. I could just place this on top of my block of clay. And then I wanna make sure that I then seal my bag. And when I seal my bag, I wanna make sure there's no air in the bag at all. So I'm trying to get the air out of the bag. And then I like to twist my bag. You could either use like a clothes pin or some sort of a clip, or you could just tuck the open part of the bag underneath and allow the mass of clay to sit on the open part, keeping that bag sealed. Okay, so I'm gonna put this off to the side. So the second stage of clay is called plastic clay. Plastic clay is fresh clay straight from the block. Um, there's a lot of water into it, making the clay very malleable. So at this stage, this is the stage where we do most of our constructing. Um, so we always start with plastic clay. Um, and then as the plastic clay is out, sitting out, once we take it out of a bag, it's starting to dry out. Um, also, our hands are porous, so they're going to absorb some of the water out of the clay as well. So something to think about as you're working is to not let your hands dry out. It'll help keep your clay plastic. So again, plastic clay is the first stage of clay, um, and we use this. We can roll coils. We can sculpt with it. We can flatten it. We can roll out a slab. Um, so again, second stage of clay is called plastic. I'm going to take this piece of clay. And I'm going to let it sit out for a little while so that I can show you the next stage of clay, um, which is called leather hard. So I'll come back here in a little bit once my clay is leather hard and we'll talk about the next step. Okay, so the third stage of clay is called leather hard clay. And leather hard clay actually has two sub stages that's really important for you to know about. So right here, I have clay that has been left out to dry for a little while. It's starting to stiffen up because some of the moisture is evaporating out of the clay. There's still moisture in the clay. I can still bend and manipulate this, but if I were to try to squish it back together and restart, I'm going to get cracks forming in the clay because the clay is no longer really plastic. Okay, so this is... A, the, the next stage is called soft leather hard. So the clay is still has some moisture in it. It's still soft enough to be manipulated. Um, and this is the best stage for adding um, clay to clay. Over here, I have some plastic clay. So this is plastic clay that I just took off of the block and flattened it. So I want you to see the difference between the plastic clay and the soft leather hard. This plastic clay is really floppy. Um, you can see that it's gonna kind of bend if I were to hold it in the center like this. Um, if I had it sitting on the table and I tried to hold up one of the corners, it's just gonna flop back down because there's still a lot of water in the clay. After this is set out for a little while, or um, we can speed up the drying process by wrapping, um, if I were to wrap this in dry paper towel, my plastic clay, and then I put this in a bag, so I'm going to just take my plastic clay, wrap it in dry. So we wrap with dry paper towel when we want to absorb moisture out of the clay. So I would wrap this in dry paper towel, and then I would need to put this in a bag, sealed, and the paper towel will absorb some of the moisture out of the clay, allowing the clay to stiffen up. It is really important that you put this in a bag, though. So let me grab a bag. Anytime we have clay that's just sitting out, it's going to dry out to bone dry, which is one of the final stages of clay. Um, and at that point, you'll no longer be able to work with it. So unless you're told otherwise by your teacher, always, always, always keep your clay or your project wrapped, sealed in a bag so no air can get in. It's kind of a big bag, but just so you can get an idea, I'll take my my clay in here and I want to make sure that my bag is sealed okay so if I were trying to get this to more of a stiff leather hard 
put this in my cabinet, let it sit overnight. When I come back, it should be to, to the soft leather hard stage. Now, this piece of clay that I have that's soft leather hard, I can tell because of the way it feels. So it's not as wet feeling. If I hold this in the center, it's gonna hold its shape. It's not gonna droop on me like my plastic clay did. Um, if I set this on the table and I lift up a corner, um, the clay is going to stay lifted, okay? So it's still soft enough that I can move it, but it's going to hold its form. So this is the best stage to join two pieces of clay together at the soft leather hard stage. Now, if I let this sit out for a little while longer and let more um, moisture evaporate out of the clay, or if I were to wrap this in dry paper towel and put it in my bag, more moisture will be absorbed out of the clay, bringing us to our second sub-stage of leather hard clay, which is called dry leather hard. So I'm going to allow my soft leather hard piece of clay here to dry out a little bit more. We would probably want to do this... Um, get it to dry leather hard. After we're done constructing our project, dry leather hard clay is where we would go next. So I'm gonna let mine dry out and then I'll come back and we'll talk about um, dry leather hard. Okay, so the slab of clay that I had has been drying out. Um, I did use a heat gun on it to help the process a little bit, um, but more moisture has evaporated out of the clay um, the clay is still leather hard, but it's now on the dry side of leather hard rather than the soft side of leather hard. So on the soft side of leather hard is when we want to join two pieces of clay together. But what you also need to know is that as the clay is drying out um, and water is evaporating out of the clay, the clay will shrink a little bit. So as the clay dries, the clay is shrinking. Once you get past soft leather hard, you really should not be attaching clay to clay. So once your clay gets to dry leather hard, no more attaching. If we had tried to attach plastic clay or soft leather hard clay to this stage, dry leather hard or beyond, um, they're gonna dry at different rates. So this is already dried some. If I were to put plastic clay on top, they're gonna dry differently and then pulling will happen. So if I accidentally let my project dry out too much and I still need to add plastic clay or soft leather hard clay to my piece, I would need to revive my clay. To revive the clay, again, you'll wrap with a little bit of damp paper towel, not soaking wet. So like I did when I put it on my, my block of clay here, I would wrap that and then I would put my whole project into my plastic bag sealed, okay? But... At some point, we do want our clay to get to dry leather hard. We also want our clay to dry slowly because as the clay is drying, it's shrinking, which is gonna cause, which could cause warping or cracks that form. So we wanna try to keep our clay um, as moist as possible until we're ready to let it dry and then we'll let it dry slowly. So this piece of clay has been drying out and I know that it's at dry leather hard because of a couple things. I can tell by the feel of it, it, um, it no longer has that wet feel, um, that soft squishy feel to it. It's more stiff at this point. If I were to try to um, turn up a corner of this, it's just, gonna, it's just gonna break right off. So you can see that this piece broke right off. Um, but at this stage, at the dry leather hard stage, this is the stage where we want to do any carving on our project. So carving is done better at the dry leather hard stage because the clay is not so soft. If we try to carve into soft clay, um, the carving, because the clay is so squishy, you're gonna get burrs that show up. It's just not gonna be as detailed and nice. So we have a variety of tools that we can use for carving and I'll demonstrate in other videos carving, but just so you can see that at this stage, this is a really good stage to be able to carve into the clay, okay? So carving would be done at the dry leather hard stage and no more adding, okay? So now this piece of clay, as I let it dry out even more, is gonna go on to the next stage of clay, which is called bone dry. 
So I'm gonna leave this piece of clay out. I may help it along with a heat gun to make this go faster, which you would never really wanna do in real life, um, just for demonstrating purposes. But once this becomes bone dry, I'll come back and we'll talk about how the clay has changed and what properties are different. Okay, so um, I've been letting my clay dry out to bone dry, which is the fourth stage of clay. The bone dry stage is when all of the water has evaporated out of the clay. So um, a couple of things that I should have mentioned before that I wanna talk about right now. Um, up until the bone dry stage, the clay is gonna be a dark in color. Um, that's because there's water in it. As the water evaporates out of the clay, the clay is gonna stiffen up. Once it starts to turn chalky looking, it's got kind of like a white chalkiness to it, that's gonna tell you that the clay is closer to dry leather hard going into bone dry. Um, another thing about the bone dry clay is it's gonna feel different to the touch. So clay up until bone dry is gonna be pretty smooth and soft. Um, leather hard clay has like a leather texture to it. Um, it's also gonna be cold. So the clay up till bone dry is gonna feel cold to the touch especially dry leather hard. That's the stage of clay that feels the coldest to the touch. That's because the water is evaporating out of the clay and you can almost feel it, okay? So once the water is completely evap evaporated out of the clay, the clay is gonna change color. So I broke mine a little bit here, but so you can see that the color of the clay is getting lighter as it's drying out. Clay at the bone dry stage is also very brittle. Okay, so you can see I broke this, um, but if I were to try to do anything to the clay, it's just gonna break into pieces, okay? So bone dry clay is the most fragile stage of clay. Um, ideally, you will not have your projects when they're bone dry. Um, if you were to let your clay get to bone dry, we can revive it, but it'll take a while. So I could add water back into this clay to turn it back into plastic to make it soft. Um, you saw me earlier use the bone dry clay to make slip. So we could still recycle the clay. So the clay up to bone dry can be recycled back to slip or back to plastic, okay? After this stage, the clay is no longer recyclable. But with the bone dry clay, ideally you'll turn in your project to me or to your teacher um, when it's at the dry leather hard stage, after you've carved your name and class code into your project, you'll turn this into your teacher and we'll allow your projects to dry slowly until they get to the bone dry stage. If you're working at home, I would highly recommend that when you finish a project, you keep it wrapped in a little bit of damp paper towel and your plastic bag until you're able to bring it to school to dry out to be fired. But if you try to transport bone dry clay, even just from your cabinet to your table or from home to school, um, there's a great chance that it will break and you would have to start over at this point. If we try to, to revive this clay um, on a project, there's a chance that the clay is going to crack because the clay has already started shrinking. So you would have to start over, which you don't want to do. So at this point, you would turn in your project. Once it becomes bone dry, your teacher will fire your piece. So bone dry clay is also the stage of clay that's ready for firing. When we do our first firing, the first firing is called a bisque fire. And bisque square is gonna be the next stage of clay that I'll teach you about in just a moment. But when the clay goes in, okay, when your piece goes into the first firing, it's bone dry, all of the water is evaporated out of the clay. If there's any water at all in the clay, um, there's a chance that your piece can break. So it does take a couple weeks after you turn your project in for it to be ready to be fired. Um, if, if I were to try to fire your piece and there was still water in the clay, that water is going to heat up because the, the kiln fires to over a thousand degrees. So that clay, the water that's in the clay is going to boil and turn to steam and that can cause parts to break off. So it is a process for things to dry out completely. Um, when these the bone dry pieces get put into the kiln, they're fired for the first firing, for the bisque fire, to around just under 1300 degrees Fahrenheit. It fires for about eight hours 
and then it slowly cools. So the whole firing process takes two days. Day one is firing, day two is cooling, okay? After that, when the, when the clay comes out of the kiln, it'll be at the fifth stage of clay, which is called bisquare. So I'm gonna grab some bisquare to show you, and I'll be right back to talk about the last two stages of clay. Okay, so the fifth stage of clay is called bisquare. Bisquare is the first stage of clay that can no longer be recycled back to plastic clay. So once your piece has been fired, there's no going backwards. During the firing process, a chemical reaction occurs and it changes the clay from clay to ceramic. So here I have a little piece of the bone dried clay. Okay, and You can see that it's kind of white and chalky, kind of like a light gray. After your project has been fired, it's going to change color again. So we can see that um, during that chemical reaction during the firing that the clay has changed. So it's gone from being a light gray to a buff cream color. Um, the type of clay we use in class is a buff stoneware clay and buff is just the color. So it's almost like an off white coloring after it's been fired. So this has been fired to around 1300 degrees and left to cool. At this stage, the bisquare stage, this is still fragile, but because of the chemical reaction that occurred in the kiln, it's much more stronger. So pieces aren't gonna fall off, you know, like the, like the bone dry clay kind of can crumble, is very brittle. It's less brittle, it's gained a lot of strength. If I were to drop this from like a high um, point, it's gonna break just like a plate would break or a mug that you have at home. Um, but at this stage, this mug right now could not be drink out of, like I would not be able to drink out of this yet. So there's still one more stage of clay and that's called glazeware. So at this stage, our um, project, this happens to be a mug, would be ready to apply glaze. There's a couple of different ways we'll apply glaze in class. One way will be to brush glaze on, like if we were painting. Another way will be that we dip the project into a bucket of glaze. And I'll demonstrate that in a, in a separate um, demonstration. But at this point, I can add glaze to my piece. And then this will be fired one more time. So most projects, not all projects, but most projects will be fired twice. The only time your project might not be fired a second time is if we paint something with acrylic paint and we don't use glaze. So there might be a couple projects where we finish them with paint and we don't glaze them but the glaze is what makes your project food safe. So the glaze turns to glass during the second firing. It melts almost to a glass-like surface on top, of the on top of your project, sealing it, making it stronger, making it waterproof and food safe. So you would be able to drink out of it, out of a mug or eat off of a plate after the second firing, which is a glaze fire. So this would be brushed down, we would add the glaze, it would get fired again to an even higher temperature. So the second firing goes over 2000 degrees. Um, and then here I have an example of glazeware. So this is the final stage of clay, it's called glazeware. This is when um, the glaze has been added on, it's been fired the second time and it's come out of the kiln. At this point you can see um, it has color to it, it's shiny. And at this point, this would be safe for you to drink out of, okay? So that's it. Those are the six stages of clay, starting with slip, plastic, soft leather hard, dry leather hard, bone dry, glazeware. I'm sorry, bisqueware, glazeware. It's really important that you understand the different stages of clay to be successful while working on your project. Thank you guys.